In today's video, we're going to continue learning about Magic Leap 2 development by adding an XR Rig, the XR Interaction Manager, XR Grab Interactable, and an XR Input Modules that are going to allow us to interact with the canvas in augmented reality. We're also going to be implementing Global Dimming, which is a functionality that is available in the Magic Leap 2, and we're going to be using the API and also seeing the results through the glasses. So, Let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a brand new scene. So I'm going to go ahead and create scene and we can call it XR Interactions. And I'm going to go ahead and double click it. We're also going to be removing this main camera. We don't need that because we're going to be grabbing a new XR rig. So if you go down, you're going to see that we have packages. Then we have Magic Leap. You also have a prefabs that we can drag and drop. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my prefab here into the view. I'm also going to be adding another component here, which is going to allow us to interact with different objects that we're going to be adding. They're going to be very simple cubes, but it's going to be helpful for some of the things that I'm going to be doing. And then now that we have that, we also need to grab another prefab I already have it here, which is going to be the environment. And this is pretty simple. Just basically it's a canvas and it displays some information about the scene that we are. So this one is going to be the XR interaction scene. So just call it XR interactions. And then we just say demo showing basic 2D, 3D objects through the ML camera with XR interactions. This is so that we know, right? Like things that we are going to be working with. And then once you have that, the next thing that I want to do, I want to add a couple objects that we're going to be interacting with. But first I want to show you what, what's under the XR rig. So if we take a look at the XR rig, and if you're familiar with the XR interaction toolkit, which if you are, there's going to be a benefit because these features available in Magic Leap 2 are going to allow you to use all of the rich functionality that they provide, such as grabbing interactions, such as using, you know, rays if we wanted to do object selection and so on. So if you basically look at the XR rig, this has the air session. It has an AR input manager, input action manager. All the inputs are already bound for you. So if I were to double click in here, you're going to see that this basically has a scriptable object that has all the input bindings to the controller. So you don't have to really worry about that. And I'll cover more of that in a future video. For now, let's just get the basic exact interactions going so that you can select objects. You can move objects around by using the controller. So if we expand the session origin, and then look at the game controller. You're going to see that we have an XR controller in here. This has all the different bindings. So if we wanted to control and, and basically track the position of the controller, this is how we get the position by using the controller position. The same thing with rotation. And if we want to select with the controller, if we want to activate, it basically has all the bindings already for us. One thing that I want to do though is I don't want to just have an invisible controller. What I want to do is I want to go into the actual objects in here. So if I go into Magic Leap SDK and we look at runtime and then tools, there's going to be a mesh in here for the actual controller. So if you look at it, it's going to be the controller that we have. And yeah, that one is this one right here that I have, the physical one. So I think it just makes the experience cooler when we have something like that. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to go into game controller and then we're just going to drag and drop the controller object in here. That way, when this instantiate, we're going to get the actual controller. It doesn't have animations, but at least it shows the actual controller when this instantiate. The, the next thing that we also have is an XR Ray Interactor. And this is what allows us to basically have a ray from the, from the controller up to a specific distance. This has a max distance that we can designate in here. And then a lot of different options in here that you can look at my XR interaction videos. If you want to learn more about it, I'm going to be linking that right above it so you guys can look at it. But for now, let's go ahead and create a new game object in here. And this is going to be the Ray Origin. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want the Ray to be colliding with the controller. I want to have an offset and this is going to allow me to do that. So if we go down and associate it with the Ray Origin transforming here, you can also do the same thing with the attach. If you were to grab an object, if you don't want that to attach to a controller, you can basically offset it by just creating an attach transform. Same thing with the actual ray. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set these to, I think I set it to something like 0 
zero seven or something like that. If it doesn't work, we can change it. But that's kind of the idea of that. So the next thing that I want to do though is this is going to give us a rig. This is going to give us a controller. But I also want to be able to, to select something, right? There's really nothing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a brand new cube here. It's going to be a very, very simple, cool cube. And we're going to be also, we can just put it outside. Well, it's already outside. So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to put it right at Z1. And then we can also resize it, perhaps something like that. And I think I can do 0.3 and just put it right above it. That way we have it right above it. And then I have a very simple material here, which we can just assign to it. It's going to be white. And then maybe we can offset it here by maybe 65. And then we can maybe angle it, something like that. I like to look, to do things that look different. So that's what that, how that's going to look like. The other thing that I want to do to this is I want to be able to interact with it. So we're going to be grabbing and not grabbing, but adding an XR Grab Interactable. And when you do that, it's going to add a rigid body and the rigid body is going to have gravity. I don't want these objects to fall. I want these objects to be basically kinematic. So they're going to be staying in the air. They're not going to move as long as I don't tell them to move by using the ray. So I'm going to also disable gravity here. It's going to be kinematic. And then everything else in here looks okay. It's going to be different settings if you want to track the position, if you want to smooth some of the rotation and position, and then if you want to throw it. So again, this is all covered in the other video that I show you. And what I'm going to do though is I'm going to go ahead and grab, drag and drop these here. That way we can reuse that component. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and clone it a couple of times. We can clone it there. And then maybe we'll just offset it a little bit here. And we can just add a couple here. I'll just do something like that we can probably do maybe maybe two more i like things to be to look consistent and align properly with the ui it looks like this works fine we can just move them all and just try to make it look like it looks uh, it aligns with the canvas and then that way we can you know, anything that if, if it looks good i, I want to work on it if it doesn't i don't want to work on it that's uh, kind of my thing but anyway, so we have all of those objects that we can now interact with. And what I'm going to do, though, is I think I'm going to move them just forward a little bit. That way they're by the by the logo and not behind the logo. Maybe something like that. We can probably do 0.25. I think it's fine. I think that looks that looks great. OK, so we have all that. The other thing that I need to do, if we go back to the game controller, and we look at the X-Ray Interactor. If I were to use the Ray right now and, and basically do a Ray cast against these objects, and I were to use a trigger button on the controller, which is going to be this one right here, what's going to happen is that the cube is going to attach to the controller. Well, it's going to try attach to the Ray Origin, which is the one that we just added. But I don't want. I don't want. I want to keep those objects right at the you know where I'm grabbing them. So one thing that you can do, though, is you can go into here. And there's an option that I can disable, which is called Force Grab. And Force Grab, what it does, it moves the object to your hand rather than interacting with it at a distance, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and disable that as well. And then Enable Interactions with UI. You want to make sure that you have that enabled because we're going to be interacting with this UI. All right, so I got everything running. You guys can see that now the controller is also rendering if I were to move it around the controller moves right in the seam and also the game view let's go ahead and see if we can select any of these objects you can see that the ray is also changing colors when i'm hovering and i can also move the cubes and i can select them so if i want to rotate the cube i can also rotate it I can grab that one bring it close to me basically put it further away from me and then basically interact with some of all of these objects and also you know, interact with the controller and use the touchpad. You can also wink and you can see how the eye gaze gets detected here on the inspector window. So this is working great. Let's go ahead and add a couple of more features. So the next thing that I want to do for the second part of the tutorial is add basically a slider that is going to allow us to modify the global dimmer. So what we need to do is I'm going to go into prefabs here and I have basically a very simple slider here that we are going to be using. I also have a title which I'm going to be using to modify the value so that you can see those two values. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop those two into the canvas here so we can see them right in there. 
and perhaps we can we can probably move him up a little bit so we can see him right above that Magic Leap logo. But we're gonna need to add a couple components to the canvas to be able to interact with the canvas. So first I need to select the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the camera here in the scene view. Make sure they have that associated. If you don't have it, I think it just uses the default, but I always like to add it just in case. And then I'm gonna add a track device graphic ray caster. It's gonna allow us to basically tell the canvas that we're going to be using a ray and that ray is going to be able to interact with the UI components. And then I also need to add a UI component here, which is going to allow us to basically send events. So I'm gonna add the event system and we're gonna grab and go ahead and remove this. And basically I'm gonna add XR UI input module, which is gonna allow us to capture input and send it to the UI. All right, so I got this running. Let's make sure that I can basically select the UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my trigger. You can see that the actual slider is working. And I know that this is actually casting the ray because it changes colors as soon as I go over the canvas, the same way that it does when I go over some of these 3D objects. So we know that that's working, so that's great. So now what we need to do is implement the dimmer. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create what's called a dimmer manager, and that's what I'm gonna call it. You can call it anything you like, but I think it, it, it makes sense in my head. To do that so if you go under scripts here and we're gonna do and create a new script so we're gonna go up here to c sharp script and we can just call it dimmer manager it's gonna be called something different in the in the api so it's gonna go ahead and double click it to open visual studio or your favorite id okay so the first thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and add a constant and this one is gonna be for the the text that we're gonna be displaying on the label and you'll say global and then dimmer text and we're just gonna say this is gonna be global dimmer. I'm also going to need a text mesh pro. So we're just gonna say text mesh pro, you GUI, and this one we can say it's gonna be global dimmer text. And then I also need to make it serializable because we're gonna be associating this through the inspector. I'm gonna add another one here, and this one is going to be for the slider. I just do control period, bring that in. It's gonna be global dimmer slider. Perfect. So now that we have those two, we're gonna to have to basically associate what value they're going to have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove these and remove that, and then do everything on the start. So that text is going to be set to the global dimmer text constant that I set. So I'm just gonna say constant, and then basically just make sure that you do the interpolation here, and then we're just gonna say global dimmer text. And we can set this to be zero to start with, and just say that it's gonna be just that. And I wanna make sure that I have two different, two decimal points. That way it just looks like we're, you know, we're making changes versus not having, not having anything. So, and then I also need to make sure that we have the slider. I'm just gonna set it by default. I'm gonna set it to the value of zero. Okay, so now what we need to do is I'm gonna add a method here, which is gonna be setting the actual global dimmer. So I'm just gonna say global dimmer, and we're just gonna set it to zero to begin with. We're also gonna be implementing that here. So it's gonna say void global dimmer. Obviously it's gonna be the value that we're gonna to set to the, to the global dimmer. And this is gonna be something that is, is available for on in the ML2. It's gonna be called the ML global, and I believe that it's called dimmer very similar to what we created. And then we can just say save value. It just feels like it's, we're cheating because it's just so easy to, to implement. But it shows you in here, like if you wanna find more information about it, this sets the value for the global dimmer, updates are reflected and so on. And then basically it just allows us to, to set it in a, in a very easy way. And then to start, it's just gonna be set to zero. And then I also want to track, when we're making changes to these guys. I'm just gonna say, uh, and make sure that I do it on the on value change. It's gonna be a listener. And then here is gonna be the new value that we're going to be getting from the, from the actual slider. And then what I'll do here is, this is gonna be the value that we need to pass in. So I'm just gonna say it's gonna be global dimmer. We're gonna be setting it to, to that value. I also want to change the, the text here for the global dimmer text. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, you know what? I wanna make sure that I have this. So I'm just gonna set it to, I think I did 0, 0.00 associator script to our dimmer manager. And we also need to associate these different 
UI components. So we're going to grab the slider here. And we're also going to be grabbing the text. And as soon as we do that, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And I'm also going to be shooting this through my phone so you guys can see how it looks. All right, guys, so I got this deployed. I want to show you the results. So if you look at the video right here, we can see through the glass how we can change the global dimmer. So, and I can also interact with the UI by using the ray. So you can see how everything, it's kind of like the opacity is changing to a higher value. We can also interact with different objects and try to lower the amount of double dimmer. And this is huge, right? This is a really cool feature that Magic Lay provides because it basically takes you from augmented reality to virtual reality by using just one very powerful headset. You can also see the, the login information that I have here. There's also a controller that gets mapped, but the, the controller is too close to, to me, and that's why it's basically getting clipped. But you guys, you guys can see it right there. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, and if you're liking these videos, please let me know in the comments because that's going to really allow me to understand if you want to see more videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe because it's going to allow me to bring you a lot more videos with the Magic Leap 2. Thank you very much, guys.